What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and I bring you the news that a Turkish journalist has claimed that Liverpool have made a 25 million euro bid for a Turkish goalkeeper so all will be relieved in this video the Turkish, Turkish journalist is basically confirming that this uh, bid has happened so I have all the news for you guys and also Liverpool's chairman gave a very interesting interview saying that the Premier League season must finish so you can hear all about that in this video so if you enjoy these videos leave a like subscribe turn on bell, the bell notification so the Turkish football journalist whose name is Serdar Ali Çelikar he works for Haber Turk and he has told in an interview that Liverpool have submitted a 25 million euro bid for Trabzon Spor goalkeeper Ugur Can Çakir so let's actually first hear what he has to say from what I know I can confirm Liverpool have made a 25 million euro bid for Ugur Can Chakir and Ugurchan has two main preferences. First, he wants Trabzonspor so to receive a significant amount of money from his sale. And my my comment that 25 million euros is a significant amount of money for a club the size of Trabzonspor. Even though they are in a very good position in the Turkish league, they are normally not in the first three or four positions. They are like a mid-table club in Turkey. So 25 million euros is a big amount of money for a club the size of Trabzonspor. And the second preference is that he would like to move to a club where he will be the first choice goalkeeper. This is what he told me two months ago. Leicester City are also interested. I mean the second uh, preference doesn't make sense to me. If he wants to be first choice goalkeeper why on earth would he want to move to Liverpool where there is absolutely 100% certain that he will be at least second choice but maybe even a third choice. I think second choice is uh, fair to say. Alisson, there is no way we are selling Alisson and there is no way that Chakir would be first choice goalkeeper but if Alisson gets a long term injury it could happen that he could play a significant amount of games like Adrian has done but I think Liverpool are considering selling Adrian in the summer and getting a second choice goalkeeper of Chakir's experience would be actually pretty good for Liverpool. So this report doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Why would Liverpool pay 25 million euros for a goalkeeper who wants to be first choice when we already have the best goalkeeper on the planet probably alongside Ter Stegen and Ederson between uh, our sticks and also the only way this could be genuine, genuine is if we bought Shakirian and then loaned him out increasing his value ahead of him potentially becoming first choice one day but Alisson is only 27 years old so Alisson can stay at the top of his game for the next five six seven years. Shakir is only 24 years old and he has done well in Turkey but uh, with Liverpool trying to figure out a way to bring in Timo Werner for smart money we consider I consider that pretty impossible that this deal could happen because as I said Chakir wants to be first choice and also Liverpool in this financial climate are never going to spend 25 million euros on a second choice goalkeeper yes if we still had only Karius and Mignolet at the club then this deal would make sense but now that we have Alisson one of the most expensive goalkeepers in the world there is no way we would spend that amount of money on just a second choice goalkeeper especially in this financial climate if uh, if the financial crisis didn't happen then maybe I could justify Liverpool spending uh, like 20 million pounds on a second choice goalkeeper but now I, I can't see that happening to be honest. So Ugur Chan Chakir, the first choice goalkeeper for Trabzonspor, he is uh, 191 centimeters tall so he's 6 foot 3 inches tall and he started off his uh, youth career at various different uh, Turkish clubs and uh, he has been at Trabzonspor from 2012 actually so he has a very very uh, like experienced he's a very experienced goalkeeper he has been playing for Trabzonspor for a long long time and interestingly as I said Trabzonspor even though they are a mid-table club usually they are in first place in the Turkish league and they are seriously going for the Turkish title if the if the season resumes in Turkey they have a serious chance of winning the league actually and getting qualified 
to the Champions League group stages straight away. That's even one more big reason why Chakir wouldn't move to Liverpool in my opinion, because if your club Trabzonspor, who you have been for playing for for the last three years, if they suddenly had a chance to play in the Champions League, would you really want to leave to a club like Liverpool to be second choice and sit on the bench? Well, p some players like uh, to play for a big club and get a lot of money and it doesn't really matter to them if they play a lot of games or not. Other p people uh, prefer to just be at a club where they are first choice in their position and they play a lot of games regardless of how much money they earn or regardless of if the, that club is a club going for titles or a club in mid-table, they just want to play football. I'm not sure what kind of player Chucky is, but that thing that the journalist said that his preference is to be first choice says to me that he is the second type that he wants to play no matter what. So that's why I don't really think that he would sign for Liverpool. But we shall wait and see. I will keep you updated. And now we have the interview with Liverpool chairman Tom Werner who is saying it's very important to finish the Premier League season. The more important thing is if we can figure out a way to get these matches played in the Premier League because I think it would be good for the whole country of uh, England. Liverpool chairman also said this, the most important thing is safety. I do think the protocols that the Premier League are working on, as somebody said, is probably safer to play behind closed doors than to go to a supermarket. It's a terrible situation we are all in. Someday, hopefully, there will be a vaccine and we can return to the joy of being in a stadium and watching the elegant play of great football players. And Liverpool maintained funding for community work from supporting fans, challenged by mental health issues, to providing supplies for food bags. And Tom Werner said this, it's better to admit to a mistake than to dig your heels in. He's referring to the fact that Liverpool changed their stance on furloughing staff. He also said, hopefully people will know that we all care about uh, trying to support the fans and support our players and our club in a way that is sustainable. And I think that's a very, very good interview by the Liverpool chairman. And Liverpool captain Jordan Henderson has also challenged Liverpool to pick up where they left off when the Premier League season resumes. Henderson was very bullish in his interview saying, to be honest, my mindset hasn't changed from where we left off because I always felt as though the season needed finishing at some point whenever it was safe to do so. So in my head, it's always important to say to stay as fit as I can because when the time comes that we do go back, we do start playing games, I need to be ready and so do my teammates. We all need to be ready for when that time comes to be able to perform at the highest level and finish the season as well as we have started it and maintained it up until this point. That's been our motivation to keep training, to keep as fit as possible. So when the time comes, we pick up where we left off. It's been great to get back and see the lads get the balls out and be able to pass into each other and interact a little bit. Football is taken away from you and it's obviously difficult because at the end of the day it's the most important thing to us. But then something like this happens and it puts everything in perspective. Jürgen Klub is also saying that Liverpool are doing everything in their power to prepare as well as they can for the Premier League season. We have to be as creative as possible at the moment because pre-season usually starts differently. So I think Liverpool will be ready for the start of the season. And Jordan Henderson also gave a comment on players who are refusing to train now that training has resumed in the Premier League. And he said this, I fully respect those players' opinion and their decision to do that. I think everybody is in a different situation with their family and at home. Un ultimately, if you don't feel comfortable or safe, you shouldn't feel forced or pressured to come into work. I fully respect the lads that don't feel com comfortable as of yet. And I hope that they respect my opinion and that of the other players who have come back. Everybody's situation is different, but ultimately for me, I feel very safe here at the training ground, otherwise I wouldn't be here. My teammates as well. I can only really speak for us, but I fully respect people in different situations who don't feel comfortable. If any of my teammates felt like that, I would fully support them and back them until they felt it was right to come back. And I agree with Jordan Henderson, but also you have to especially feel very sorry for people who don't have a choice to stay at home. Some workers, essential workers, have to be had to keep working throughout this whole pandemic since the virus hit 
the, their country, they had, still had to keep going to work, otherwise they wouldn't be able to feed their family, to pay their bills, to pay their mortgage. And it's, it shows a big disconnect in the society that some footballers can just say, I would just say sit at home and not go to work for months until uh, we have a vaccine for this virus and while like hundreds of thousands of other people um, in Europe probably have to go to work every day whether they like it or not whether they think it's safe or not otherwise they will they will lose their livelihood and they will not be able to pay their bills and support their families and that's the harsh the reality, the harsh truth. Uh, so that's the only problem that I have with this situation. But I might make a separate video talking about this in, in more detail because I have a lot to say on this subject. And also what's really interesting is there is many different opinions going around in the Premier League. For example, Steve Bruce and Ryan Sterling say, says that they both say that the Premier League should not resume before the end of June. And uh, Ryan Sterling said this, like, you can't come back in with one and a half or two weeks of training. And Steve Bruce also had some very strong words. We have listened to what has been said and it, with the precautions taken, we will get back to work and start phase one strike training. Can we get to that stage where we can have all the players on the pitch together? We don't know yet. Phase one will be mainly fitness work, four or five players on the pitch. Let's see how we get on and hoping there are no new infections. And Ryan Sterling said this, you, you would need a full four to five weeks of training, especially if you are going to, to go back into competition, when you are literally paid to win, it's going to count for something. You need to do that preparation. You can't just go straight in. We need enough preparation time to get these players into shape and they are just go or they, or they are just going to fall down like a pack of cards. That's what Steve Bruce actually said and also he said most of my many most of the managers I know have the same concerns. We would need at least 6 weeks of training. I don't see how we can play games on the, until the end the back end of June. And that's a long long time still. But I can understand uh, his point because yes Premier League players at least need four or five weeks of continuous intensive training it's like having another preseason in the middle of the season because footballers missed nine weeks of playing and that's a lot longer than usually a summer break the summer break is usually like maximum one month four or five weeks if the if after a four or five week break the Premier League players need a preseason then imagine how much of a preseason they need after a nine week break and yes they have been training at home but that's that's not really the same as uh, as having a proper games proper training on a football pitch and also quite hilarious story Harvey Elliott and the fact how he learned first that Liverpool wanted to sign him and remember he is a boyhood Liverpool fan and this is what he said it caught me by surprise I didn't think it was true at the time when I heard of Liverpool's interest, I thought to myself, wait, is this really happening? Even the first time I stepped into Melwood, I was like, wow, it's actually true. I'm at Liverpool now. Even now, there's sometimes I take a step back and think I'm playing with players I've been watching for three or four years now. And to be around Liverpool is a big dream for me. What I have to say is that Harvey Elliott is a brilliant player. But he is uh, like a very young uh, teenager, so he should be taken off social media because he has been involved in too many scandals on social media and too many troubles. And I think he should just take a step back, concentrate on his football, because there is a very real chance that, that Harvey Elliott could get himself into trouble too much on social media and maybe Liverpool will consider selling him. We are not at that stage yet, but I feel that uh, like a 16 or 17 year old um, player who is such a big talent shouldn't really be playing around on social media on his own. He should have people guiding him through this because footballers in the public eye, like everything they do, everything they tweet will be a headline if it's not uh, in line with Liverpool's uh, club ethos so so that's my advice for Harvey Elliott and Vina Dumoso said that he is really looking forward to training because you know we all love football we all love to play football so we want to play as much as we can 
and he also said this also the moment that the situation we were in was quite good um, when the season stopped so it was really hard for us professionally that it stopped immediately after the game against Atletico Madrid in two months we didn't do something that we love to do and we are happy that we can start again it's still good that we spoke with each other on whatsapp and in the team sessions in the on video but to see them in person and talk to them and have a laugh to my teammates that is something different so we, we all look forward to going back play football with each other i think that's the thing that we missed the most because now we had to train alone and we couldn't do that much but hopefully we can do more and we can play together instead of alone so we are really looking forward to doing things as a team again and Vina Domoso continued, yeah, I feel ready. The results were also good because every time we do training, the fitness team is looking at how we did and how fit we are. So everything is looking good. But of course, it's different when you are on the pitch and when you are playing with the team, different intensity and everything. So I think I'm ready for it. But we always have to see how ready and how far we are in our fitness. But that's something for later. We are really happy that we can go on the pitch play with each other and do the nice stuff because that's what you miss the most and from there you can work uh, on all the other things. And I love the interview that Craig Bellamy did on Sky Sports where he said that Manchester United are still years away from Liverpool and of course he is a player who played for Man United's biggest rivals Man City and Liverpool so you have to take that into consideration maybe he's a little bit biased but I actually agree that even though Man United could sign some big players in the summer they could still take at least two or three years to get to the level of, of Liverpool and this is what Bellamy told uh, in the interview so this uh, pandemic hit and it seemed to be quite a good time at Manchester United. Everyone is talking about them, but they are nowhere near Man City and Liverpool. Nowhere near. It's going to take a good three or four years to get near. The balance that both Man City and Liverpool have in their team, the way they play, the intensity they play at, the pressing and understanding of what they are doing, takes them well ahead. These two teams are a big gap ahead of everyone else. With Jurgen Klopp's side, Mo Salah and Sadio Mane, they roll inside, they get their width, they still attack with five players and defend with five. But I think the structure of Man City being wide and staying wide, dealing with 1v1s, would probably suit my style better. Players being in their position, understanding their roles, understanding where the pockets are, that would probably suit me better because I don't believe I am as intelligent as the likes of Mane and Salah to go from out to in. I like creating that width and create one-on-ones out wide. And that's actually a very humble, very honest opinion of Craig Bellamy that he thinks he's an inferior player to Salah and Mane. But I, what I loved about Craig Bellamy is that he always worked extremely hard on the pitch. He always gave his all at Liverpool and that's all that you can really ask from, from anybody playing for Liverpool in my opinion. And this, is how, this was also put to Bellamy that which front three he would prefer, the Man City front three right now or the Liverpool front three. And this is what he said, I feel this is a massive disservice to either of the front threes, they are miles ahead of me. Ryan Sterling is incredible, miles better player than myself, but when he goes over to the left, I would say that's a little more similar to the type of role I would suit myself. The one player I think Man City has missed so much is Leroy Sane, just for the balance of the team. Not just his pace, but don't under underestimate his pressing, how good he is at that. He's been a big, big miss this season. I agree with Bellamy. I think that the fact that Leroy Sané got injured at the start of the season really hindered Manchester City and they weren't as consistent as they usually are. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I had fun making it. Thanks for watching. See you later, guys. Goodbye.